Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow! I feel like you were waiting to hear how mine sounded. Yours was mm. nice. Thank you. You were expecting something different. We're gonna be in harmony soon. We will be in harmony. <clears throat> so this is episode so fourteen. No... You're what? Deaf in my right ear, so I have no. I'm tone deaf. I just realized that we should have switched sides a long time ago. Probably should have. That's why I keep having to turn like this when you're talking. It's really annoying. Sorry, audience. So just excuse just me. To, just trying to listen. <laughs> so this is episode 14 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Oh, I don't know if I can now. This is weird. You want to? Yeah. Let's right. do it. Oh gosh. Oh, you're sitting Man. up a little higher over there. I feel ten pounds lighter. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so this is episode 14 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Um, as we always do in the very beginning, just want to explain to you what this podcast is about real briefly, and that is, number one, uh, to show appreciation for salespeople. Uh, we just love salespeople, and we think that every single person, uh, regardless of what you do, uh, is involved in sales probably on a daily basis. Uh, and so we just want to show appreciation for you. And then secondly, uh, we want to provide tactical training, real uh, training that you can put in uh, to use immediately and that will impact you, um, you know, next week, impact you next month, in, impact today. you next year, yeah, today. Um, but that'll actually be able to, uh, this will be able to take something out of this, a nugget here and there uh, and plug it into what you're doing. So that's why we do this. Um, this is episode 14, episode 14. And on this episode, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to go through uh, some of the common excuses that we hear. Uh, we've got about 70 uh, coordinators across the country. We talk to salespeople all the time, all the time, uh, just in what we do. And we've been in various sales careers and various sales in various industries, sure. And so we've probably heard every excuse, or that made you them have. ourselves, or made them ourselves. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't even think about that. We could probably just oh, come yeah. up with the ones that we've we've made up ourselves. Oh, I've said them all probably. And so we want to look at those, and then we want to kind of attack those. Um, so we've got we found a website um, way, that, that had a couple good ones. That was a great introduction. That's the first time I've heard you do it. Introduction to what? Just now, the whole podcast. I'm good. Now that my good ears. Fourteen tries. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> this is weird on this side. It this is way more comfortable to me. Good. Right. <laughs> so we're gonna jump right in here. You want to take the first one? Yeah, yeah. So excuses, right? Let's talk about excuses for what a second. What is an excuse? I, I love certain sayings about excuses, yeah. but uh, but excuses build monuments of nothing. And those who rely on them never accomplish anything. That's a good one. That's not the one I thought you were going to say. That's a great one. An excuse will leave you with a firm grip on an empty sack. That's the one. That's, the one. That's my favorite one, right? <laughs> and, and literally, when I hear these excuses, I just see somebody just sitting there just with an iron-clad gr grasp mm -hmm. on something that's completely empty. Yeah. It's the skin of a reason stuffed with a lie. That's the other good one. Okay? Yeah. So, so we're going to jump into these because all of these, it, it, there's the skin of a reason, mm -hmm. right? So go ahead, jump into the first one, and, and you'll see that it's just the skin of a reason, but what you do with that excuse is you stuff it with your own lie. You buy into the lie, right, that's stuffed in the skin of a reason, and, and, and you allow it to dictate uh, your lack of success. So I'm envisioning a boss um, sitting there saying, you know, hey, uh, Joseph, hey, your sales numbers are down this month. Uh, what's going on? And, and the first one here is, well, we're just, we're just not competitive. We're not competitive. On price. On price. We're not competitive on price. We're not competitive on price. So what would you say to that? The first thing that you would probably say, because I've heard you say it a million times, and it's going to be the overarching theme of our response to every one of these questions, is probably, you're right. Exactly. You're right. 
Sure. Because no, whether you mean, believe it, because whether you believe it or or you don't, we're probably right. Yeah. If you think we are competitive on price, or if you think we're not competitive on price, that's all you need. Yeah. Both true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You believe it. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. You have heard me say that to people. It's it's irrelevant. So here here's the thing. If 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 you think you're not competitive on price, right? Um, which which I've heard in our industry, I've heard I've heard about the same price and the same product I have heard this is unbelievable I don't know how they do it so cheap <laughs> and I've heard nobody's gonna buy this man this is a tough racket you we're trying to sell this this whole whatever price it is mm -hmm. it's unbelievable but but if you change your thought process you're selling on price and not value mm -hmm. and and literally I don't care if it's a shit sandwich I could sell it mm -hmm. for quadruple the money because I come with that sandwich mm -hmm. and I value me, right? I value me and my addition to whatever product it is and, and whatever service I bring to the table. And that's my perspective on it. Mm -hmm. That you're selling on price, not value, and you don't value yourself. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably the easiest excuse. The easiest excuse. Yeah. Because it has to do with your competition. Um, and, and anytime it's, it's, it's a, it's a fail safe, uh, excuse to just blame it on the competition. Sure. Because that basically means that somebody else is out there selling it cheaper. Yeah. Well, that may be the case, but you can sell it better. Uh, and so that's what it's all about. And so, I mean, and the thing that, that initially comes into my head is I think about like cars, like automobiles. Oh, like, yeah. You know, Mercedes still tells, st still sells a lot of cars. Mercedes you know, is way more expensive than, than yeah. Honda. Sure. Right? Um, so the second one, I don't have time to complete sales reports or update the CRM. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I don't have time. You know, Bill Gates <laughs> has the same 24 hours you do, mm -hmm. right? Every successful person, every person that did have the time to complete that information they have the same amount of hours in a day that you and i have right mm -hmm. and we have different lives i have four children you have one now mm -hmm. you see it's different to have a child yeah, that takes up time mm -hmm. that takes up life mm -hmm. and you still get you get more done now that you've had a kid yeah. than before every time i'm every the busier i get the the more efficient i am but the more things that i get accomplished that aren't even aren't even part of those tasks that are making me busy it's crazy it's right. like you get into that you just get into that that mode of efficiency, I guess. Um, like every time I'm on the road, like I'm always insanely busy, but I get so much more volume of yep. work done um, during that period of time when I'm the busiest. And, and when there's pressure, when there's deadlines, yep. there's, it's always, it always works out that way. I heard um, it said like this, I heard it said a mentor of mine says, you wanna get something done, hire a busy person. <laughs> you wanna get something done, have a busy person accomplish it. Mm -hmm. You get because busy people get stuff done. People yeah. that are that manage their time well that get get. I mean that's just a fact. Now, along the same lines, I don't have time to complete sales reports or update the CRM. The devil is in the details, mm -hmm. right? That's like somebody telling us they don't have time to look up anything on the appointment they're going to. Mm -hmm. They don't have time to look up and see how many employees they have. They don't have time to look up and see the history of that company or that industry. They don't have time to do, to prepare, right? What is it Nathan always says? The will to win must be great, but the will to prepare to win mm -hmm. must be greater, Absolutely. right? That'd be like Michael Jordan saying, you know, I, I don't have time to practice free throws. I don't have time. I don't, mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. When most people spend, what, over 30 hours, the average person spends over 30 hours watching TV, there's a reason why they call it a damn lazy boy, <laughs> right? There's a reason, right? Absolutely. And they don't call it, they don't call it a stallion of a man, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's true. I right? would buy that couch. I would buy that couch. <laughs> I'd be resting in it right now. <laughs> they don't call it Viking God. So, <laughs> so the reality is you have the time. You have the time. Yes. Chances are you're just wasting about 70% of it. At uh, least. And so if you actually audit your day, uh, and I mean physically audit your day, like take an audit, like with a pen and paper, Throughout your day, identify where you're using your time. So what am I doing right now? What did I do this morning when I got up? What time did I get up? What did I do during lunch? How long did I take for lunch? What did I do during lunch? When I got back from lunch? If you actually like 
record your day and be honest with yourself, yep. good, bad, or indifferent, because you're only going to be able to move forward if you actually realize what you're basing it off of. Um, but if you did that, you would probably realize that there are s small gaps in your day that seem like not a big deal, but when added together equal hours of hours, yeah. hours of time that you could be using towards something, um, you know, income producing or productive. And so when people say they don't have enough time to do this, yet they did go to happy hour yeah. or yet they did go to their whatever intramural football game or sure. they did Softball. you know sleep in till 8 a.m. or yeah. they did I mean sleep is one of the biggest things I think I mean there's not a single successful person out there that doesn't get up early it just that's, doesn't that's exist and so that's usually the easiest place where you can um, you know, time I got up? add time to your day you know time I got up two did you two yeah, I don't know. yeah. last night yeah by the time we do something like this and, and, and record this which is what eight something I thought, I thought it was lunchtime when I walked in here. Yeah. I was like, what time is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So people can, you can train yourself to do that. And then when it comes to the specific question here, the specific excuse as far as like, not just that I don't have time, like that's a whole other excuse. Right. But I don't have time to do sales reports and, CR, sales reports and CRM. Number one, I mean, I would look at that and I would say, it's awesome. And by the way, to do the damn <laughs> lawn work outside our building right when we're recording this. That's fantastic. I mean, if somebody throw a rock at that guy's head, he's literally blowing. He's right literally right the beside the window. Awesome. I'm gonna throw a book at his face. <laughs> God Almighty! So I'm gonna go tell him to shut that <laughs> thing off. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. So, while we wait, hey. see if you can hear this. Hey! <laughs> That's awesome. So, when it comes to the actual CRM and, uh, and, and what does it say, sales, uh, complete sales reports, when it comes to that, the reality is there's, there's a difference between now money and later money. And filling out those CRMs, filling out those sales reports, that's what secures your later money, because it 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 makes sure it's it in, ensures that you have gotten all the proper documentation on what has been done up to this point, so that moving forward you get to take care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, God, get you inside. And so those, I was telling them that that was you know now money versus later money, right? Um, in regards to the actual filling out your CRM and sales reports, and that you know you're ensuring now that you have the proper information in your system so that later on down the road when you need it mm -hmm. that it'll be there and so there's really no excuse for not doing that stuff and quite frankly if you're having to do that kind of stuff you're probably being required by a boss to do it sure and it's something very interesting um, that we've seen over the last year uh, from our perspective uh, looking at trying to get coordinators to do this very yeah, thing absolutely. fill out their CRMs and, and things like this and what I try to explain to them is when you when you have salespeople all over the country, and this is probably a lot of you that are in situations where you know you may not go to an office every day, mm -hmm. but you work for uh, you work with a company that's based somewhere and that has systems like this, sales reports and CRMs, things yeah. like that. When you have that, you have to understand that those reports and that CRM, that's really the only tangible thing that your leadership is able to look at to base their whole judgment on your success or failure. Yeah. Like your number your your results are one and then your efforts the other. But they don't see your effort. They're not seeing you driving in the car and going right. and knocking on the door and doing this and that. They're seeing it in the freaking CRM right. and the sales report. And so if that's the only thing that they're seeing other than your results, then I would probably want to nail that down. Yeah. I would probably want Plus, anything that my boss or that my uh, someone that, that ultimately just had control over the future of my career, anything that they saw and that they were basing any judgment off of, I would probably want to at least complete, no no less, right. uh, but 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 do it well. Uh, it's just, it just it blows my mind when people think it's... I don't know. Plus, plus, somebody can look at that. Somebody that's genuinely interested in your well-being, right, can look at that and go, oh, it tells a tale. Yeah. 
and see everyone has blind spots. Mm -hmm. Everyone has blind spots. I have blind spots. I have people that point out my blind spots. I'm so thankful for them mm -hmm. because it wouldn't be a blind spot if I saw it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I can look at that information, that CRM information, the sales report information, and go, Tyler, man, you're missing this right here. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. We've had those conversations. Yeah. Tyler, you're leaving a lot of money on the table with AP or with mm -hmm. this or with that. And you and you go, huh. Yeah. yeah. And then what do you do about it? Fix it. Fix, it's yeah. easy. It's not, it's, and it's not a, uh, people that are hiding something don't want to fill that out. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, you may have gone over all that. Let's well, no, I, and, and the big thing there too is it's, you know, when things are going great and when you're crushing sales, that's, that's one thing. When things start being not so great, that's when they go to those reports and they say, well, you know, well, Joe, he's not doing great. Let's look at his, let's look at his CRM. Let's see what he's got in the pipeline. Well, he hadn't filled out his CRM. Well, now Joe's really not looking so great. Now he's really not looking great. <laughs> but but Joe may have all this stuff in the pipeline that they yeah. don't need, they don't have any note, but but they won't know unless they can see it. Uh, one other one that was was great on here is that the economy is crap. That's why my sales are crap. Oh man, the economy's crap, right? The economy's not crap. Oh, did you see? Did you do the Leeds one? I did not. I was going to go back. Oh, to that's idea. great. Well, this, you can do both of these together. The yeah. economy's crap. The leads are crap. Yeah. Well, the immortal Glenn, words of Glenn, Glenn Gary, Gary, Glenn Ross, <laughs> you're crap, right? <laughs> I mean, the leads are crap. The economy's crap. Look, anytime this has been my this has been my opinion, and we started this this company in the worst economic condition that this country's seen since the Great Depression. Okay, but it was always our thought process that when economy goes down, right? It represents a large shifting of, of financial resources, yeah. right? Lots of people lose money. Well, when they lose money, it goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, I always thought, man, when there's high gains and when there's great losses, that's the greatest time to build a business. Absolutely. Because that's the most opportunity. And 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 frankly, in this country, right now, all you have to do is highly be highly self-responsible. Be be what is it called? Have, take take personal, take personal responsibility. responsibility. You take personal responsibility on a massive scale and work hard, and you'll stand heads and shoulders above everybody else. So this, the leads are crap. The 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 economy's crap. That's that's crazy. Create your own environment. So I became a financial advisor in two thousand and seven. Stock market crash, 2007. It's awesome, yeah. And everybody else, it was like they were just getting started and they were already looking at a career change. And it was the biggest learning experience for me um, getting started as a financial advisor. Uh, I was young. Uh, you're talking to older people yeah. <laughs> um, about their entire well-beings, no, sure. um, which was very, very rocky at that time um, as far as financial well-being and I can remember it so clearly and this is super good advice for anyone out there that's in the financial industry at that time when things started to tank and they got worse and worse and worse and worse every single financial advisor was in their office hiding under their desk <laughs> and, not, and not answering the phone and their clients <laughs> and, their, and their clients. Don't, don't ever do that again. Like this, it's open like this. <laughs> but they were hiding under the desk. They were not answering their phones. And their clients were scared to death because they were at home watching the news. And so what was I doing? So while that financial advisor was not answering the phone, I was... Knocking on doors. Baby. Knocking on the door saying... Just wanted to introduce myself, um, Tyler Harris, I'm a financial advisor right down the road here, just out doing some good old-fashioned advertising. And I would start talking to them about their investments, and I would start talking to them about what was going on in the market and giving them a little bit of peace of mind because they hadn't been able to get a hold of their financial advisor. And I told this story uh, a few uh, episodes ago about how I would call them up and I would just have you know, any news that I could find about an investment that I knew they had and I would start talking to them. And again, their financial advisor would not pick up their phone and I was calling them. I was showing up at their door. And it was the single greatest time to transfer accounts from other financial advisors Greater. that ever existed. And yeah. so, not everybody thought that way. 
Right. All these other financial advisors that were getting started with me, they were like, that was that was the that was the excuse. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not doing all that great. You know, it's been a slow start, but I mean, t- have you seen the market? I'm like, I don't even look, look at the market. I'm and, like, I'm too busy out there selling. That's exactly what I said. When it dips that low, it creates the greatest opportunity right. for wealth transfer. And you figured it out at an early age, and, which is smart. And now, I mean, we talk about, you know, with what we're doing. I, right now, am so focused on just accumulating cash because it's going to happen again. Yeah. And when it does, there will be so much opportunity out there. And also. when you are the one with cash, when the market tanks then you have the ability to become unbelievably wealthy. And they say that's how the rich get richer. I can tell you That's how the smart get richer. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So that's my next quote. (laughs) It's how the smart get richer. All right, next next, uh, next, uh, piece of crap excuse is uh, my territory is weaker than everyone else's. All right. We probably hear this the most. Holy the crap, man. I hear it from both sides though. So 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 yeah. I've heard it like this. I, I live in a rural place. Mm-hmm. So I've gotta I've gotta go to more places and they're smaller and, and and blah 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 vomit, right? And then I hear it the other way too, right? I live in I, they're all big cities around me, they're all massive places, just much harder to get into. Mm-hmm. And and literally that's what they're saying is my territory is weaker than anyone else's if i had a different territory the grass is always greener on the other side but somebody that says that my territory is weaker than everyone else's my territory is weaker when what they should be saying is quit being weak Mm -hmm. they should look in the mirror and say quit being weak go and do what you need to do every hand that you're dealt is a loser Mm -hmm. and every hand is a winner. I have people that say, I gotta drive an hour and a half to that department. And it makes me wanna laugh. I wanna send them, I wanna send them directly over to you because you have to drive three hours just to get to your territory, yeah. right? Yes. In the beginning. Mm-hmm. They're like, man, it's that's like an hour away from my house. <laughs> and I'm thinking, an act, put something positive in your in your player listen to something good better yourself and get on the road and go make something happen it's just it baffles me man. what's the what's the saying that success is 10 percent what happens to you and 90 percent how you react yeah, to it yeah, it's your reaction. um it, it's it's so true and that's probably one of the one of the excuses by far that we hear the most and that gets the most response of what we said earlier you're right when someone tells us they're like but my territory like i just this territory is just not going to produce that type of, of uh, production. Well, you're right because it's not with you there. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's not with right. you there. I mean, that that told me that, that that Tennessee would never. I mean, this what we were doing would never work in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the biggest uh, one of the. It's one of the top five biggest mm-hmm. states for us in the United States. Absolutely. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. It was just the perspective of two different people. <laughs> anyway, that's awesome. That one's ridiculous. Go to the next one. Product. Talk about their product. My pipeline is stacked for the next month. <laughs> That's awesome. It's always. <laughs> yeah. it's the always. next month. Oh, this is a bad one. But <laughs> next <laughs> month. Yeah. Now, there's a difference between taking a week to slow down to speed up, which is what we call it, slowing down to speed up, yeah. which is going back and doing um, the initial stages of your sales process to fill up your pipeline. Now that does happen, but for an entire month for sales to lack, but to say that next month is going to be stacked, that doesn't really, that doesn't really no. make sense. No. no, the deck needs to be stacked every day. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it doesn't even, that doesn't even make sense as an excuse. Like who takes that excuse? And so I guess we can probably just close here. Cause you here. can look at that one. This is what I would do. If somebody says, well, my next month, you hear that about two or three times from somebody mm-hmm. from the same person. I'm like, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> you want to know why? Because you're going to be selling something different. Yeah. You're not with us. Yeah. That's, well, that's true. <laughs> you're, you're done. See you later. So, I mean, this episode and the episode from, let's see, it would be two episodes ago when we talked about QBQ. That's what a lot of this has to do with. Or was that three episodes? No, it was two episodes ago. Whatever. Was it QBQ, fear, and then the um, Q&A? Or was it fear, Q... Yeah, so QBQ is this. So that was two ago. 
That's what a lot of this has to do with. A lot of these excuses True. are putting blame on something else and not taking blame yourself, not owning it, not That's taking right. personal responsibility. True. So if you get anything out of this, um, get that and that any excuse when it comes out of your mouth, it is you putting the blame for your lack of something right. on something else or someone else or yep. some system or whatever that may be. So take Product, that and flip it. Product, company, the economy, the whatever it so is. So take that and flip it and, and throw a, what can I do to make this situation better so that I don't feel this way? Or what can I do to increase my sales? What can I do to close more of these leads that I'm getting. Not, these leads are crap. What can I do to close these leads? Get better at closing difficult leads. <laughs> what can I do to exactly. get better at closing so, the difficult so it all comes I mean, back. What? It all comes back to you. So you live your life at the level of the quality of the questions you ask yourself and others. So, I don't know if any of you have ever said any of these excuses. I've said them before. All of them. Yeah, I know I have. Every one of them. Um, and, and some of you are. I wasn't are saying all you have. I was saying well, me have. too. Yeah, I've used every one of those excuses. Absolutely. And so, take that and uh, and just put it back in yourself. Personal responsibility, okay. and uh, and that's the only way you're going to move forward. Um, I enjoyed this this podcast. I like it. Uh, I hope you did too. And uh, if you did, uh, please share this on Facebook. Uh, that would be uh, world, it would mean the world to us. And uh, we will come back at you next Friday uh, with another podcast. And we're going to get super creative on that one as well. So with that, I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolf. Arr! Arr! That sounds. That sounds weird. <laughs>